Hi everyone, thanks for coming and giving up your sunny Saturday. Um, we're going to make a start because time is precious. Um, and just wanted to say a quick hello, tell you a little bit about ourselves and then what we're going to be doing with you today. So I'm Liz and this is Claire. Give us a, a wave, Claire. And we together are learner armor and we first met at university 30 years, more than 30 years ago. And ever since, we've been supporting teachers and schools, trying to promote drama as both a subject in its own right, but also as a really good pedagogical cross-curricular learning tool. So uh, kind of the, the place of drama in the curriculum is problematic, I think, within England because it's within English. And this leads sometimes to, especially at a primary level, a lack of kind of CPD and teacher training focus, a substantial focus on drama. So way back in 2003, um, there was a large scale research project into the arts in primary schools. And it found that drama was the least likely subject to be included in teacher training or in CPD. And in our experience, even where there is CPD or training, sometimes teachers struggle when we get back to the classroom to translate that into practice or to make it kind of meaningful to all of the learning that we're, we're trying to support. So what we try to do and what we're going to do today is we try to model some different ideas normally through working with children and having teachers working kind of collaboratively with us. And then we offer things like more traditional CPD and help with planning. And teachers, the feedback from what we've been doing is that it's that bit that they really need help with. So that's kind of our aim with Learner Armour. So I started by asking if, if drama was a food, what foods would it be and why? And this was a key question for my master's degree, because I think sometimes if we use metaphor, we get different kinds of answers. It's a different way in. So we had a great response from, from Giggle and Scouser, whose name I just love, obviously, um, that, that drama was like dark chocolate. Um, you know, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's fantastic. And then we had another great response. Thank you, Maria, uh, that it was like an orange. I had a, a number of responses when I conducted some research with teachers and they said, some said it was like relish, it was good on the side, but some teachers said it was like sprouts, that they, had to, they knew it was good for them, but they had to be kind of force fed. And what I love about drama is that even for the non-specialist, we can really try bits out and we can see the value of it. It makes us go back and try more. So definitely not a sprout, thanks, Giggle and Scouser. The teacher who said it was a sprout to me, she, her face was red just talking about drama. And drama is one of those subject areas that is both a subject and also a tool. Now, as a subject, sometimes teachers have had a bad experience. All my, my practice with, with mainly undergraduate students and then qualified teachers, they often say, they were forced to perform or they they really didn't like speaking in front of other people and those elements of drama they, they found that really um challenging so i kind of think what whatever reason you've come to this session before some of you might really enjoy drama and use it widely in your practice some of you might be drama specialists and and use it regularly within your teaching the focus today isn't going to be on learning in drama as a subject in its own right, it's as complex as maths. You wouldn't say maths was just addition the way you wouldn't say drama was just acting. But today our focus is gonna be less on the drama skills and more about just some techniques that you can pick up and maybe just take into your own practice. And if you find anything useful today, we'd really love to hear from you, especially if you take it and you try something out. So um, dramas, I'm going to do just a brief research overview. This will be useful if you're trying to raise the status of the arts within a setting, or if, if some of you are thinking about researching drama or using drama 
having a really firm evidence base for why drama is important is a good way to open up discussions about the arts and creativity and the inherent value. So the important thing is drama, when used as pedagogy, you don't have to be good at acting. It's really good if you're not that good at acting because the children then will help you out. And it's like anything with teaching, if we're too good at it, sometimes that can be off-putting for the people that we're working with. So Claire and I aren't here as kind of fabulous actors, even though I think we are Claire. <laughs> um, but what I want to say just at the beginning, we're still learning. And with our work with teachers, every time we come back together, we reflect on our practice. And so we need that feedback from you so that we can reflect on this session today, the things you found useful and the things you'd like to know more about. Um, so Claire, could you just share that slide? If you want a copy of the slides, just email us and we're going to give them to Aspire as well, because um, there's just some key slides that it's useful to have beyond the session. So drama and the learning, drama, drama's role in inspiring learning is quite well evidenced, but some of that data is a little bit old. And that's because drama kind of was at the forefront at the, with the birth of the national curriculum. So, um, but, but this research base is quite wide and shows that drama is really useful for things like helping children to learn about influence for reading, um, helping to motivate children to children's writing. There's some lovely research by Younger et al, which looked at um, some drama being used to motivate reluctant writers. And in that research, it's boys, but actually the role of drama in bringing text to life. Sorry, Claire. Um, I love this quote from Baldwin and Fleming, that drama is where language is applied in practice. It's a safe space to, to play. And Connor's amazing keynote this morning. I hope everyone got to see it. Fantastic. Connor was talking about the importance of playing. And I think in my work in the early years, we value play, but sometimes in a knowledge-based curriculum, the value of playing together with children and to learn collaboratively can be lost. So if beyond the session, you want to go and read three key things, which are quite fairly recent, I would recommend that you have a look at DICE, especially if you are working within a secondary setting. DICE shows the value of drama. It was a large scale research project across many areas within Europe, and it shows drama's value in, in delivering Lisbon key competencies. So that is all the kind of entrepreneurial skills and confidence in the, the first language and so on. So that offers quite a good rationale for the wider values of taking part in drama. The Royal Society of the Arts published a, a great, um, it's like a booklet, a PDF booklet. We've got it on our website, but if you Google it, you can find it that way as well. And the RSA argue that in arts rich schools, it's, it's a really beautiful document that shows case studies of schools that place the arts really centre um, within the curriculum. And they look at I picked out kind of three key messages that the role of drama in terms of timetabling, so having a space for drama and a time for drama, that drama doesn't just become about other subjects, that it's, it's valued in its own right. The importance of extracurricular activities and the ex importance of working alongside specialists. Now, the, the final piece that I want to just mention briefly is Durham's Commission on, on Creativity and Education funded by the Arts Council. And that talks about the importance of teaching for creativity and, and leaving things open-ended so children get a chance to take part in a process and to make things their own. So in the session that we've prepared for you today, we've got some examples where the learning is more fixed and we've got some examples where we could open up that learning process and allow this cultivation of creativity in the young people that we work with. And I, I think that we all need to really continue to raise the profile of all of the arts. And it's why we're so happy to be here today. 
So Claire's going to begin by introducing you to three techniques. Two of those techniques we don't think seem to be used enough within education. And we're going to model those and we're going to ask you to join in via chat. So we won't force any of you to do drama, but if any of you would like to, we'd love you to join in with that too. But what we'd like you to do is to comment on chat. If you've got any questions, pop that, those there. And at the end of the session, we'll come back to them and um, we'll, we'll hopefully have time for a bit of a discussion about things that you find intriguing or comments that you'd like to make. So hope you enjoy, hope you join in and over to Claire. Thanks, Liz. So the first technique we're going to look at is called overhead conversations. And it basically is about the participants in the drama listening in to private conversations. And why? What are the benefits of that? Well, the great thing about this technique is it creates a point of tension by introducing new information to the drama, to the context. It also provides additional information, so it opens up the story, so we might find out information from a different character's point of view, for example, or their motivation for why they're acting the way they are, why they're behaving the way they are. And then that new information can lead into the children's own composition, including um, creating their own overhead conversations as well. The second technique we're looking at is writing and role. And the beauty of this is it can occur before, during, or after the drama lesson itself. Um, obviously, it provides an authentic opportunity for purpose and audience, authentic reasons for writing. But often that's where the writing can stop. The purpose becomes the final outcome. Rather than using the writing by moving on to the technique of reading in role, and again, you can see on the slide there the benefits of reading in role within drama. But I just want to point and draw your attention to the bottom two in particular. I think Liz and I find one of the greatest benefits when we're working in schools is that because we're writing in role and then moving on to using it into reading, as a children are worried about the transcriptional aspects, we're not worrying about the handwriting and the spelling. They're important, but we'll deal with those afterwards. But within the moment of the drama, it's the content that counts. Another great benefit of reading in role is that it, it provides endless opportunities for children developing a range of reading skills um, and to transfer that knowledge. And it's just not, reading in role doesn't just have to be the reading of the child's, the children's composition. It can also be published work. So it could be, for example, from history, primary sources, a bibliography, a diary, an historical report, and so forth. So it's a way of sharing knowledge within the drama, as well as honouring the children's own writing. So there are the benefits. So the first example that we're going to show you, these are the key questions that we want you to think about. Um, I'll take these off in a minute, but don't worry, I haven't got to memorise them, because I'll share them again, but we just wanted to highlight the context we're going to give you this time. So the context is, Liz is going to model and we are going to overhear her conversation based on Jack and the Beanstalk. Those of you that don't know the story, it's in a nutshell, in one minute, um, it's about a little boy, sells his magic beans, sells his cow for magic beans, he goes on an adventure up a magic bean store. Okay, so I'll flash those um, questions up again afterwards, but I'll just stop the share so that we can overhear the conversation. Joe, oh, I'm sorry for calling late. I just don't know what to do. Can't speak any louder. You might hear me. Yeah. Yeah, he took her. You won't believe this. Five beans. Five beans. I know. Oh, Joe, he's, he's just in trouble with everyone. I don't know what I'm going to do. Thank you, Liz. So I'll just pop those key things to think about, and you might want to then pop some of your ideas in chat. You might want to answer all of those questions. You might just whatever pops into your head based on who might be talking and why. And this is going to replay it. I forgot to say that. Liz is going to replay it so you can listen in again. But I'll keep those key questions on. So who might be talking? What are they talking about? When? 
Where might they be? Why are they talking? And who might you be to trick you on to think about? Who might you be with the listener? So if you could replay that, Liz, for us and anything you can think of, put into chat and we'll have a little look at afterwards. Hi, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry for calling so late. Just don't know what to do. I, I can't speak up. He might be listening. Yeah, he took her. Five beans. Yeah, that's right. Five beans. I know. He's in trouble with everyone. I just don't know what to do. Thanks, Liz. So, who, what, when, why, and so forth. They're the key things. We're just going to have a little look, Liz and I, between us on chat to see. Um, we've got from Maria. Jack has just come back from the market and a magical firefly is listening in to the conversation. Okay, so answering who might be above that. Have you spotted any, Liz, that you've... Um, that was yeah. Jack's mum. Yeah. Davy Pastry's iPhone. I just love this. <laughs> Davy Pastry's iPhone, Jack's mum. And it could be Jack's mum. It could be, if we do this work with children, they, they might say it's Jack's sister, it's Jack's friend, and so on. Because we've prepared the text, we kind of, um, we've tried to prepare it with some open-ended areas, but it, I think Jack's mum, it tends to be the consensus Davey, you're not sure now on the second listen. Do we know who she's talking to? So whoever the person who's talking, who is she talking to? A little thing. So is it... But, well, is, we've got Jack's mum in the kitchen talking to her oh, yeah, friends. Her friends. Oh, and Jack's listening in. Okay. Yeah. Fab. Jack's grandma... Like that. And a best friend or a mum. Yeah. Might be talking to the vet who was looking after the cow. And good spot in there, Davies Pastry. This is so great, really analysing the context and it keeps it so open ended because where we take the drama next then completely depends on the children's responses. And that that's the bit the teachers can find a little bit scary. So just be brave and go with it because it really engages and motivates them then. If you just go with, you know, the, the popular kind of decision making that the children come up with. Um, so, yeah, some really great responses there. Should we move on? To so, no, can we can we just look when when might they be talking? So somebody yes. we had one response yeah. yet that they've just come back from the market. Jack had come back from the market. Any clues of what you heard Liz say about when they were talking? It could be just after the cow was sold. When when I've done this activity with children in kind of year one, year two, the, it depends on the version of the story that they've read because sometimes yeah. the mother's actually beaten Jack and in some versions of the story, Jack's, Jack's actually been hit and sent to bed and in other versions, um, Jack's mum is just furious and throws the beans out of the, um, out of the window. Um, for, in terms of the listener, we'll come back more with the with the next activity. But where where we could take this next, already you're beginning to see it depends who if Jack's listening in, we could follow Jack's point of view. We could we could look at advice for the mum. Maria, that's great. Um, doesn't know what to do because she was trying to help and and so ask them for help, I think, is a wonderful thing to do with children, where it changes the dynamics between teacher-led ownership and it puts the ideas over. I don't know what to do. Can you advise me? And that, that's a great way in. So we want to push this forward to a small piece of writing that would like you to create. And as Claire um, discussed earlier, we can do this writing, can't we? Often we talk about writing it in role, but sometimes that writing can be out of role, about role, or before the drama, during or after. So we want you to create the short note that goes onto a post-it, that goes onto the fridge before he goes up the beanstalk. So you're going to be writing as Jack, 
that's who you're going to be writing as. Keep Claire. it short. Don't be a post-it note. But think about as well, in your mind, depending on the versions you've heard, as this mentioned, how old do you envisage Jack to be? And what's his relationship with his mum? And what's he like as a character? Is he, is he an honest kind of character or not? Because that might influence what your post-it note says and how you say it as well. So think about that. Who are you as Jack as you write? So I'll come out to share in a minute because I can't see the chat myself otherwise. Um, so short post-it note and we'll shush for a minute to give you a little bit of thinking time. See what you come up with. What might message might Jack leave? Is it just before he leaves to go up the type it into chat? I won't read it yet, once it's popped up, let's give people a little bit of a chance to get theirs on. Some fantastic ideas yeah, coming in. I love them. When, when I've done this in schools, the children I give them real post-it notes and it's amazing the variety of responses. And there's something nice about a post-it note because it just keeps the writing short and meaningful. So, you know, make sure if you've written yours, have a look at the chat in case we don't share all of them. We won't have time to share them all. So have a little, good little look at them whilst you're waiting. So we'll start reading some of them um, so that we can share um, more. I've gone out to play. I'll be back for tea. Sorry about the cow. Love you, Jack. I like that one. So uh, they are fantastic. And as Claire said earlier, often when we write with role, the writing itself becomes the outcome. So that's in a book or it's on a wall or it's shared. For reading in role, we, we begin to take this writing and we begin to dramatise it. So if I read um, one, if I read Maria's, I'm just going to do Maria's, I might read that as mum. So children could take different post-it notes and then they could dramatise the reading. So the writing becomes much more powerful. So, Joe, oh, you'll never guess what he's done now. He, he's taken himself out. I've gone up the beanstalk. Don't worry, I've taken me in a hail of a cheese sandwich. Love you, Mum, love Jack. He knows he was grounded. So where's he gone? Will you help me find him? So in, in that role of, as taken on mum, we could read it. Um, I want to save this beans we can eat. Sorry, back for tea. Fabulous. Now, with children, I think we just missed earlier, JV Pastry had said, are we going to be Joe? This, yeah. this can lead into lots of different things. Yeah. But um, with, when I've done this with children, where they lie, where Jack has lied, has led into some really... What was the really example you gave me? What's that? You, you, you gave the example of where he's lied, where he's been a child right. Can you remember what it was that he put? What's that? When he'd lied, what had he put when he'd lied on the post that you... Oh, they've just gone, gone to grandma's, see you later. Yeah, yeah. So, Dead simple. So sometimes this then then leads to opening up a story that teachers do really well, don't they? Acting out stories and exploring stories and hot seat and characters. But often that's like learning in drama because we're just replicating somebody else's story. Whereas with your ideas, if Jack's lied and said, I've got, I want to see if there's beans we can eat back for tea, we can then follow mum's story. So, so the real story of Jack, Jack and the Beanstalk is taking place up the Beanstalk, isn't it? But our story of Jack and the Beanstalk can be following his mum 
as with a missing child. And then we can meet the villagers and his teacher and, and people like that. So sometimes children decide we're going to go up the beanstalk and that's where the drama is going to take place. But sometimes it's actually a parallel story, which is way beyond the traditional tale of Jack and the Beanstalk. Thanks for joining in with that. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so great. Um, we'll save some of those to share afterwards with the spire. So thank you. Um, so our next example, um, still slightly context based, as in we want you to think about characters from literature still. OK, so think about which characters the next conversation you overhear may be from. There's no right or wrong for this. And this time it'll be both Liz and I modeling it. Just a quick reminder there of the key things you might want to think about, who might be talking, what are they talking about, when, where, why, who might you be as a listener. So I'm going to stop share for a second so that you can overhear. And again, we'll, we'll say it twice. So listen to it once and then we'll rewind and replay it give yourself a little bit of thinking time and then just whatever comes into your head any characters that it reminds you of as you listen in and they might be your own characters they might be a creative oh, yeah. writing yeah. focus not necessarily from a, a known story absolutely could be one yet to be created by the children themselves okay i don't know what's got into her she never used to be like this i don't know what she was thinking I wonder what she's going to do next. So it's simply that. So start to think about who on earth, it's a she, so who on earth might that be? Okay. And we'll replay we'll do it one seconds. more time, yeah. Claire, while we, while we think. While they're thinking. No right or wrong for this, as I say. I don't know what's put into her. She never used to be like this. I don't know what she was thinking. I wonder what she's going to do next. So any ideas from characters or characters you, you've, who is she? What might have got into her? Which part of the story could they be talking about? I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think traditional tales are just so rich because yes, often absolutely. there's issues around morality, aren't there? Oh, um, yes. So, Goldilocks' friend talking about a break and Gretel after eating. Gretel, ugly, ugly sisters, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. It could be Lady Macbeth's friends, couldn't it? If we, we could take that kind of context and, and open that up, that what's happened with Lady, I think she's the most interesting character in Macbeth. Um, so Claire, you had some ideas in mind, but these are just what I were in my head from my reading because there's no right or wrong, but it depends which text you've read. Okay, so these are the ones that brought they brought to mind for me. So it's fantastic for linking in. I'm actually moving now. Fantastic for linking in to the text you're studying with your class if you are a, a class-based teacher, or just activating that prior knowledge. So some of those texts you'll recognise, and you might not have read. Bottom three, so it won't mean anything to you, but it means something to me as a reader, and it might mean something to my class, or it might just be personal if you're keeping it so open ended. But we're going to home in on a um, little Bo Peep there as our example. So just for you to think about well, where next, once we you know overhear the conversation, what might we do? We've only set the scene, set the context. Where does that take us next? So we might move on to reading and writing and role again. So we might take on um, the role of Bo Peep, adult in role. Oh, thank you for being just like, help me share my sheet. What should we do first? And again, it's very open-ended, it's very child-led. It's up to the children what to suggest to do. And you can see straight away, it could be any context, not necessarily the Bo Peep context, but these might be some of the suggestions that the children make within this drama. Um, and the kind of writing opportunities in role that it might lead to. So, for example, posters, leaflets, Twitter to advertise, sheet gloss, help, have you seen them, and so forth. And then we move that back in to honouring that writing by, by dramatising some of those um, written outcomes. So the children might take on the role of the villagers 
where Bo Peep lives, for example, and they've seen come across the posters, and they'll read and react and respond to them in the role. And that's just it. You pick an easy one, but you don't need a story or a context that you'd all be familiar with. But as you said, that could apply right the way through the Macbeth to any context, any age group. And I like the Juliet, Romeo and Juliet. And I think the hard bit is kind of script and doing the short bits of scripts, but children could be doing that themselves. So they, we could be overhearing the conversations that they've scripted and rehearsed and performed and then going with one of those ideas and, and, and then taking that drama further. Absolutely. Quick reminder for our next example, the same key questions, the same key things to ponder around. This one that you're going to overhear from Liz and I again is completely decontextualised this time. So to help you, you might even want to think about a particular subject area. It could be linked to history, geography, BSAG, RE, anything. So again, who might be talking within that particular curriculum area. You can still stick to literature as well, to English, that's absolutely fine. We'll play it twice. I'll stop share so you can see our faces and just overhear and think about, and then we'll share some of our own examples as well afterwards. Okay, so. I wish they didn't have to go. I know, but they'll have to. Who knows what they'll find when they get there? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I hope it's for the best. Are they ready, though? So have a little think. Who on earth could we be talking about? It could be characters. It could be real-life people, to say, linked to history, geography, anything. What kind of context? Have a little think and type anything in, we'll replay it again though first for you to listen. I wish they didn't have to go. I know, but they'll have to. Who knows what they'll find when they get there? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I hope it's for the best. Are they ready though? <laughs> Nicola loves that, the move to secondary school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I felt like as a primary teacher. Yeah. Friends of Anne Boleyn, love yeah. it. Yeah, love Evacuation, it. yes, that's one of the examples we thought of, so that's great. We're all on the same track. Mary and Joseph heading to Bethlehem. Yeah, fab. You can just see how it's... And Liz, we haven't thought about it, but on our website, we'll put these simple tips on, so if you want to pinch them, you're more than welcome to, um, just to start you off if you want, but because they're just so open-ended. Because you can see how you can link them to anything. Love those ideas. Right, I'll share screen what we came up with. Um, we just kept it open-ended, so just more a range of different contexts. Because I'm realising it's Zoomed by this session. So it could be an expedition linked to geography. Evacuees, which we heard refugees having a conversation. So you can see how a, a great leader setting off to battle or to agree peace with their neighbours. Literature again. So loads of different, um, and, and I can tell you, you all um, recognise that, loads of potential. Liz is now, we're going to model one more example really, really quickly. Um, so we're, we've, we've taken this idea and then we've tried to apply it more specifically to an area of a curriculum that we that we work within. So what we want you to think about is where we're going to take you. So I'd start by saying something like, um, we're going to take you back to 1040-ish, and we're going to listen in to a conversation that's happening between two courtiers. So the year is around 1040, and we're going to listen in to two courtiers. And we'll say it twice again, so just listen the first time. And you don't have to type this time because we'll reveal the context just so you can see how it links in. I wish he didn't have to go. I know, but he'll have to. Who knows what he'll find when he gets there? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I hope it's for the best. I wouldn't like to be in his mother's position, I'll tell you that much. I heard that Edward Okay, we'll play it one more time before we reveal the context that we'll be supporting the children with. 
I wish he didn't have to go. I know, but he'll have to. Who knows what he'll find when he gets there? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I hope it's for the best. I wouldn't like to be in his mother's position, I'll tell you that much. I heard it's Edward. Okay, those of you who are in a particular year group um, and may have to teach this topic may know. Um, I'm not expecting many of you to know, so we are going to share and just show you. Um, because, of course, it just depends on your age group, your subject area, what you're expecting to teach. Um, this is the context, though. Let me have a little look. So this could come at the start of the topic, couldn't it? Where we, we listen into a conversation and then we go and read and write for information to kind of find it, find that out. Um, or it could come in the middle of, of a, a topic or a theme where we want to find out other points of view and we want to open up. We could be using primary sources. So we're, we're still kind of embedding the real history kind of skills and techniques. But this is just a way in again to, to kind of give the reading and writing a purpose rather than it being so abstract. So what we'd like from you is we'd like you to think about what, what might you do as a writing outcome next? What might link to this contextualised example? So if you can pop into chat, any writing or reading in role ideas where you could take this after this overhead conversation, that would be fabulous. And you don't have to be an expert on Edward the Confessor to suggest ideas. You can just apply it to any historical moment. I'll leave that up for a minute there. So yeah, lovely, a letter from Edward back, back in England a WhatsApp message and there's a tension, Maria, isn't that, that when we're doing history, sometimes we're trying to embed the kind of historical facts. Um, and so sometimes there's a tension, isn't there, between the technology from now and the technology from then. But if we've travelled back through time to listen as time travel adventures... Which we love doing in drama yeah. because it's a great technique. Sometimes I'll be in role as the doctor and I'll take them in the TARDIS and we'll travel back through time. And I think the WhatsApp mass message, no, but I think if we, if the children are going to be now, they could do WhatsApp messages and they could play with those techniques. I think that, that that's good. We've, we've put on, um, on this example from the Bayo Tapestry, Claire was lucky enough to visit the real one. Um, and take some fabulous images. So we were thinking about kind of where, where we might go next is we could either be in role as the embroiderers creating the, the Bayo tapestry and te the teacher could be something like um, a member of the court going to look at progress and the children could be presenting key ideas from that history. So that could be using tableau and still images, or it could be small improvisations, or it could be like a collaborative play that we play together. So we could have all different versions uh, or di different aspects of the Bayo Tapestry, and each child or group of children have to go and research what story that's telling and then dramatise that story. And the other idea we had was that the children could be, be working as tour guides and they could be scripting information about the history to give people who don't know anything about it a, a guide, a guided tour of, um, of the Bayou Tapestry. And Liz, we've got half a minute left, so I'm going to oh. move you on to the next slide. It's just whizzed by for half a minute. Um, so ju just some final thoughts, it's a whistle stop tour really of three techniques. I'd really love to know if you take anything forward from this, but if I could give you the headlines, it would be if you use and write and enroll to think about what you do with that right now, we honour it and we can use it. Um, 
if you if you go to our website we try to put on creative sparks and way, ways on there's a bunch of resources and we've also got friends of learner armor so if you think uh, if you'd like to add anything if you'd like to comment that would be fab what i'd love from you is if you try it and and we'll get back to you so you can either email us you can tweet us at learner armor and we hope to see you again. Please keep in touch. And um, thanks so much for the lovely comments. I hope yeah. I hope you've all taken one thing from it. Thanks, Dave. Well, please, Thank if you've got time to quickly chat with anything that you would take away from this and just to put in anything that you'll try just off the top of your head, it would be lovely to hear any of the techniques that you really liked, if we're allowed. You might get told off for being an extra minute. I'm sure we'll get away with it. And it'd be really great to hear some of your voices because you've, you've just had to listen to my beautiful Scouse twang. Do you want to stop, share? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Can, oh, I, just ask, can, can I just say thank you so much? It's absolutely amazing. I'm oh, definitely going to do the overheard conversation. Oh, oh he's gone. Oh, Davey, oh, he was no. he's there. <laughs> no, I'm back. Um, the overheard conversation is amazing. I train primary school teachers like I think you do too. Um, is that is that your thing? Is that if I reference anybody, is it you to reference that that's that's your uh, it's, approach? It's just a drama technique. It's just listening in or over conversations. It's just a drama technique. But yeah, we yeah. don't own it. Yeah, we don't. Oh, right. own it. Drama, drama itself is so it's as broad as maths. But often we only hear about hot seating or or everything yeah. else. In the yeah. But drama's got millions of these. If there was one book that I'd recommend you get is Games for Actors and Non-Actors, which is what okay. actors actually use to train. Yeah. It's full of games with loads of different drama techniques and loads of different ways in. But I kind of think when you're working with teachers or trainee teachers, it, it's kind of picking these little unknown things, isn't it? And exemplifying yeah. them. And well, then, I mean, I use a lot. I use I'm um, roll on the wall and corridor, glass corridor, and all the um, yeah. promenading and all that. But it's the first time I've ever heard overheard conversations. It's okay. amazing, and I I do a lot of science teaching as well, so I bring drama into science, and that's okay. perfect for science. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So please keep in touch and tell well, us what you've yes, used. What you try out. We we did have a moment of fear where we said, "What if everyone's using this?" Because we're just basing this on our, our experience of it being underused. But um, but the drama specialist, the secondary drama specialist, will know this already. It's just it sometimes gets lost in devising techniques or, you know, learning in drama rather than through. Yeah. But great to hear about the use for science. That's that's really fantastic. Thanks. Well, you've been so inspiring. It's been what I've brilliant way to spend a Saturday thank you so oh, much thank you. And thank you. Davey, you had great. me wondering whether somebody was on Davy Pastry's phone <laughs> I, I, I started creating all characters somebody had pinched Davy Pastry's phone and then <laughs> I'm a bit of a baker that's where the name comes from my oh, name's wow. David and I bake so that's where it comes from that is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much Oh, Our pleasure. Well. Follow Thank us on you. Twitter. You'll be able to know Will do. what we're doing. Any, Will anybody do. Else? Bye bye. 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 Anybody else would just yeah, love that, that was absolutely awesome. It was just what I needed this morning. Um, I'm drama trained, but a long, long time ago. And these things are just brilliant. It's just little snippets that you could use in the classroom. Loved it. Thank you so much. Well, thank, you so much. Thank, you. thank you. I saw your little message. You were getting in touch with you, Maria. That'd be Fabulous. great. Thank you. I think it's it's really interesting because we're primary background, but we did a four year B Ed, which doesn't so really nice. exist. Yeah, I did it in Chester, long, long time. Yeah, we were, we and drama. Went, yeah, we were at, at, at Redden, and because it doesn't really exist anymore, there seems to be this gap between primary and how primaries use drama and secondary specialism. I'm not sure that secondaries always get the chance to influence pedagogy in subjects like science, history. history but I yeah. feel like you, secondary drama teachers should be head of teaching and learning that because it's so it's fantastic. Yeah. My it's daughter's funny. just done a GCSE history and the teacher read the book to her and I was saying, Get them to work with the drama teacher. Get them to bring it to life. So, so fly the flag and 
get your voice heard and offer to do things across. It's just time, isn't it? You need a senior management team who see the value in pedagogy. That drama becomes memorable, doesn't it? Because when we do, when we play, they're the things that we remember, aren't they? Not always when we read. So please keep in touch. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank Lovely you. to meet you all. Bye. 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 I also wanted to hear you in a minute. I just want to hear you people. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much. I um I'm starting my PGC in primary teaching in September, um but I've been a stage manager for 15 years before. Wow. So um kind of I came on today to the the the, the learning through um, arts kind of going. This is where I need to be. This is kind of you know this is kind of where I've come from. So it'd be really great to kind of transfer it over and and it's been this is this has been really great to kind of go. Yes, actually you can just use it in any kind of any lesson really and kind of just bring it forward and make it more engaging for the children yeah well, thanks for that. and I think I think sometimes you go into when I began working in teacher training so that was 18 years ago now I used to have whole modules about drama pedagogy we, we're fans of mantle of the expert which is amazing but quite complex to do in a in a session yeah um what I found over the years drama becomes one session or half a session or a bit of a session so these kinds of things, I think it's a, it's a beautiful day. So giving you Saturday up is amazing. But I just think these are the things that don't just make you the good teacher, they make you the great one. And I think that's what we all want to be, isn't it? We yeah. all want to want to inspire and, and have an impact. Yeah. So thanks so much for thank coming. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Take care.